I am coming up on a thousand births that I have assisted and been honored to attend. Oh, hi. How's New York? Other than driving from Brooklyn to Manhattan by myself today, which was a new adventure. I saw a post on social media. I was available. 13 days later, I was in New York City for my first day. Every Mother Counts was so excited to support the opening of the Jazz Birth Center. During the time of coronavirus, more people than ever have been wanting to access maternity care outside of a hospital setting. Birth centers are a very safe place to give birth for people with low-risk pregnancies where people have really wonderful experiences in their childbirth care. You have family nearby. My family is half in Colombia, half in Oregon, and some in Europe. So. Gotcha. None of them can, they, we were all planning to have that support, but with, with yeah. COVID, everything went out of the way. Right. So with okay. the added anxiety uh, of COVID on top of pregnancy, it's really important that women learn to moderate that. Is it affecting how you eat? Is it affecting your social interaction and your blood pressure? What also needs to be addressed is the effect of the mother's stress on the developing baby. The good news is five to 10 minutes a day of a woman taking a deep breath, listening to music that she likes, writing in a journal, snuggling with someone they love, five to 10 minutes a day of getting those warm feelings to reset that hormone system can reverse the rest of the day's damage. Here, living the dorm life. Got my own bathroom, which is great. Because I'm here on a temporary assignment for the moment, I am living on the top floor of the Jazz Birth Center. It was a youth hostel before we moved in, so there's a whole floor of rooms that are still set up as a hostel. It turns out you can cook all kinds of things in an instant boil teapot. I have been here for six weeks. I have three kids and a husband. You already got your cap and gown. It's still on, I guess. I guess. So far as we know. Sometimes it's harder to talk to them because they talk about stuff they've done during the day or whatever. I'm like, oh, I wish I was there, you know. I'm trying not to cry talking to you because they do actually get to come and spend a week with me here. And we were this close to COVID ruining that too, <laughs> you know. Yeah, Jenna specifically asked that I eat some New York pizza for her. We can do that. I have always been interested in mothers and babies. From the time I was little, I was the one that would stand in front of the mirror with a pillow under my shirt. But then really when I had my first child, having her in the hospital was not at all what I wanted it to be. I felt like I had no choice, no control. A lot of unexpected things happened that weren't explained to me. And I would say it was pretty traumatizing. I didn't feel like I connected with my daughter. I counted seven other people held her before I did. I just kept thinking, you know, I was a decently educated woman. I was already a registered nurse. Why did it happen this way? I didn't want anyone to ever feel like that again. Other than surgical procedures and managing high-risk pregnancy, a woman can really get all of the care that she needs from the midwife, and the midwife will refer her as necessary to more advanced care. Obstetricians are trained as surgeons, so they are trained to diagnose and treat complications of pregnancy. Midwives are trained more holistically and wellness-based. How do those other aspects like social environment affect the physical environment? There have been some really interesting studies on outcomes on the midwifery model and improvement of health disparities when access to midwifery is more available. Mm -hmm. 
my primary goal is not to avoid hospital care or physician involvement. My primary goal is to get a woman the care and the birth that she actually desires. And I will 100% support her because my goal is for her to have the choices, not for me to say, well, this is how you should have birth. The strong mother, the scary mommy, is the one who is willing to do whatever it takes to protect the baby that she's birthing, even if that means a huge change of plans. That's when I feel like I've done my job the best, when we turn maybe not a good situation into something that a woman could still look back on and feel empowered through. Well, I cannot wait to see you guys tomorrow. Yep. Massive yep. hugging, just be prepared. It's gonna be very embarrassing in the airport. Okay. <laughs> At the end of the day, no matter what kind of day it's been, crazy long, you know, being on call 24 hours at a time, I came to New York, left my family in Missouri, all of that is worth it when I feel like a woman has really gotten safe care with her choices being respected. Then I feel like I am fulfilling my purpose. Oh, of course. Like you could just stare at him for like hours. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. My name is Jessica and I'm a scary mommy.